on Limbaugh. Reverend Sharpton joins us tonight here on The Ed Show. How'd the meeting go, Reverend? I had a very good meeting on Tuesday, and I think, Ed, that where we will go in the beginning of the year is the push for public hearings. Uh, we had a very fruitful meeting that they could not infringe upon free speech, but they can talk about standards and can have open public hearings where radio owners and personalities, and certainly we would want Mr. Lombard to be one of them, would have to come in front of the FCC and answer direct questions on direct statements and how uh, they may be offensive based on gender and race so that the FCC can then shape policy based on the results of those public hearings. So we're going to press the National Action Network to have those public hearings where the owners of these stations and people like Rush will have to explain in public before public uh, hearing of the FCC on exactly what the standards ought to be and explain their statements, me, you, and everyone. Oh, explain the statements. Come before the committee and tell us why you're not racist. And of course, Al Sharpton's going to judge that. <laughs> it's through the looking glass, what has happened? That is that the same, Reverend Al Sharpton? Is that the same guy? Okay, because uh, I remember there was a rabbinical student that was killed in some riots. Oh, I, uh, uh, we're on. Pardon me. Welcome back to Nothing But Truth. I'm Crane Durham. And coming up at the end of the program, we're going to be talking to Brian Darling from the Heritage Foundation, get the inside on the political skinny. But at the bottom of the hour, we're going to be taking your phone calls of the topic of the week, specifically the headline of the week. But right now, we go to a man who writes the headlines of the week. That's right. He's a journalist. He's an author. He's a commentator. He, you can catch him on Floyd Reports, floydreports.com. He is the rights writer, Ben Johnson. Ben, welcome back. Thank you so much, Crane. I was thinking about, I want to get to Eric Holder and the DOJ and its protection, or it, it, excuse me, its obsession with protecting certain groups and while ignoring others. That said, when you hear Reverend Al, you've talked about this, and you, I've used your articles for research, but Al Sharpton is trying to use the power of the government to silence people who happen to be conservative under the guise that he doesn't like racism being promoted and seemingly advocated for and spoken on federally controlled airwaves? That's, that's his uh, allegation, yes. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, and, and perhaps some of your own listeners don't know, uh, you know, in order to get on the radio, it takes more than just buying a microphone or going to a radio station. Uh, in order to get on the air, the most important thing that you need is an FCC license. You know, uh, the radio stations need them, broadcasters need them, or uh, I guess when I was starting out, you had to have one if you were on the air. But uh, the radio stations themselves are licensed by the federal government. And for the most part, as long as you don't offend certain guidelines, there's no trouble. If you uh, use certain language on the air, then you can be fined. Uh, if you stray into certain topics, then you can be fined. And if you go out of bounds too many times, you can lose your license if you do something genuinely offensive. What Al Sharpton has done with the collaboration of the Obama administration is said, too many of these licenses are in the hands of uh, conservatives. There are too many conservatives on the airwaves, on the one medium that liberals don't control, which is talk radio. So what they want to do is redistribute these licenses. And the method that they've come up with, the Obama administration, as you know, is, is obsessed with racial bean counting. And they say that, lo and behold, there are too many of these uh, licenses in the hands of white people. Uh, so what they want to do is redistribute them to uh, radio stations that would, say, run Al Sharpton's program or, uh, or uh, Lenora Falani or some uh, radical uh, left-winger on that side of the spectrum. Sharpton is trying to shut them down through another means, which is to say, you know, uh, Barack, uh, I should say, uh, Rush Limbaugh sometimes makes fun of Barack Obama, and it's not because he does so because he's a, you know, he's a comedic genius. It's not because he does so because he has genuine differences with policy, but because he's a hate monger, and we don't allow racism on the airwaves, so we should yank his license so that he can't broadcast. And that's what you heard. He met with uh, the FCC already this week. Now they're talking about public hearings, this kangaroo court, in order to uh, yank away uh, Rush Limbaugh's ability to communicate on the one medium that liberals do not dominate. And eventually that's going to have a chilling effect on everyone who dares to commit thought crime and dares to tell nothing but the truth. 
So, Ben, what is Reverend Sharpton's racial record? Because I'm not looking at him for any advice on race relations. Uh, Your thoughts? I mean, because, I mean, how is this guy really, why is he still recognized as a leader? He's been tremendously irresponsible. Oh, unbelievably so. Uh, with Al Sharpton, uh, many of you, many of your uh, listeners may know his record, but uh, he was he had a long history in New York City in Brooklyn. Uh, he began as a boy preacher and uh, then went on the road with James Brown, and he came into his own as uh, a civil rights leader, so called. But basically, he was a racial ambulance chaser. There was a terrible case up there. Uh, a girl by the name of Tawana Brawley claimed that she was uh, raped and beaten by police officers and that this whole thing was covered up, and uh, you know she had racial epithets written on her. As it turned out, she, uh, and Al Sharpton uh, took her case to the public forcefully, said that uh, you know she was the victim of City Hall. Turned out she faked the entire thing. There's strong uh, evidence to suggest that Al Sharpton knew about this, and he continued to stoke those resentments. In 1995, uh, there was a, a place called Freddy's Fashion Mart, uh, and there were riots there because uh, uh, the owner, who was Jewish, uh, ended up putting uh, a black business uh, out of business after it defaulted and it couldn't, couldn't continue to make its payments. And Al Sharpton led these racial riots saying that uh, his word were white interlopers were coming into Harlem and taking, uh, pushing out black businesses and uh, you know, getting money for uh, terrible money-grubbing people, particularly those of the <clears throat> Jewish faith. Not that he has any problem with them, of course. And Al Sharpton and uh, the black Muslims uh, had these riots throughout the area. And matter of fact, they culminated in 1995. Eight people were killed as a result of the resentments that he helped fan. Uh, so, and, and that, as you mentioned, one of them was, a, there was later a rabbinical student who was killed mm-hmm. uh, as well. So uh, he has, he's been at the forefront of racial resentment, racial rights in this country. He has been in the forefront of tearing America apart. Uh, he is a divider, not a uniter. Yeah, he wants it to be the great salad bowl because he's into identity politics. Part of identity politics, unfortunately, has been really focused and highlighted by the likes of, of uh, uh, now I'm blanking, Attorney General Eric Holder. We're a nation of cowards when it comes to race. He has been at the forefront of this with his criticism of a bill he didn't read, a law he didn't read, SB 1070, and he has certainly not been the most aggressive when it comes to taking away any kind of color bar or color lens when it comes to the enforcement of our voting rights with the Black Panther case. Tell me, recently in San Francisco, he gave a speech, you wrote about it, what, was, what, what did he have to say? Well, Eric Holder addressed a group called Muslim Advocates, a uh, Muslim rights group out in uh, San Francisco. They file court cases and things of that sort. And there had been complaints that... Um, there have been some some uh, Muslims who were arrested, and uh, the Muslim organization said they were entrapped by the federal government. All of them, coincidentally, were uh, arrested either trying to overthrow the government or plotting acts of terrorism against American citizens. Uh, as I mentioned, they were all Muslims. Uh, for for this reason, they said they were being targeted, and the federal government had to do something to stop Muslims from being arrested trying to overthrow the government. Holder went out and said that um, you know, he was not going to back down from what had already been done, but he was going to put the full resources of the Department of Justice at work prosecuting anti-Muslim hate laws. Now, hate, hate laws are, are ridiculous in the first place. Uh, if, if you commit a crime against someone, that's a hate crime. It doesn't matter whether, whether you hate them, love them, or whatever you do. If you commit a crime, the behavior is what is important, not the potential thought crime that may have been committed along with it. The other dirty fact of this is hate crimes have been absolutely static. In fact, they've been falling for, for anti-Muslim hate crimes for 10 years. Uh, there was a spike after 9-11, uh, as, as you may have imagined, uh, a few more than 500. Last year, according to the FBI, there were 107 anti-Muslim hate crimes. Jewish people were more likely to be targeted. Pacific Islanders were more likely to be targeted. There were 126 anti-Asian hate crimes, uh, not against Muslims. White people were more likely to be targeted in hate crimes. Black people were more likely to be targeted in hate crimes. But Eric Holder has made sure that the Department of Justice is going to prosecute people uh, who allegedly do something against a Muslim because they don't like Muslims. You see, this, this is just part of the Obama administration's perpetual outreach to Muslims, whether it's Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and not interfering when he kills his own people, or whether it's 
the fact of the matter is right now public broadcasting spending a million and a half dollars to broadcast Al Jazeera news on public broadcasting stations. Uh, if you heard about uh, the man in NASA who told, who said it was his job to go out and make Muslims feel good about their their uh, role in space exploration, so they can take right. Sharia to the moon. I mean, this this is the Obama administration's insanity that if you're nice enough to people who want to kill you, they'll no longer want to kill you. It is the most dangerous miscalculation we may ever face. Are are you at all looking at things and saying? Here's a guy who says, I don't want somebody to be pulled over in the dead of night when this mother is pulled over by with their daughter getting ice cream and being asked for her papers in response to 1070 or talking about racial profiling and talking about cops and having to do the police summit and all of that nonsense. And then I'm thinking to myself, then he goes out of his way to take a group of people and a religion and number one, not challenge the group to say, define yourself in the sense of you are not, you are not with our enemy that's slaughtering us and you don't believe in the doctrine that states that everybody else but you has dimmy status. And I know Muslims that don't buy into that nonsense and like Zudi Jasser, we have him on all the time. But he's talking to groups of people that supposedly have been victimized. When it's out there, Ben, they use that against us. That's one of their tactics. That's or, what the enemy uses against us. Ben? Ab absolutely it is. You're right. There are Muslims who do not buy into this. There are Muslims who want to be normal Americans, and they happen to have a different faith than we do. As long as they don't mean us harm, God bless them. Uh, you know, I don't share their faith and never mm. will, but uh, no. I, I don't have any problem with their pursuit of liberty. Uh, what I do have a problem with is if they want to subjugate the rest of this country. You know, it was only 50 years ago. John F. Kennedy had to prove that he didn't want Catholics to rule from the Vatican. He had to say that Catholics could be uh, responsible Americans and uh, and uh, that the uh, the Vatican would not be telling him what to do as president of the United States. He stepped up. He said, my church does not speak for me and I do not speak for it. Uh, we should have Muslims who are willing to say, my allegiance is to the United States of America, to the Constitution, to the First Amendment right of everyone to worship equally and to have equal amendment status before the law. Every one of us has equal status. None, Amen. status, none of us have special rights. Ben Johnson, FloydReports.com, the rights writer, Ben Johnson, author, commentator, and journalist. Ben, one week, one time a week is not enough. I'll call you next week and we'll have you on twice. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Crane. God bless. Take care. Thank you. Coming up, your phone calls. Headline of the week. Nothing but truth. AFR Talk.